way to hop into this first game. So let's go through those player intros and get things started. We'll be moving up to the top left-hand side of the map on top of the blue Protoss player from Ting. He is Neeb. And spawning over in the bottom right-hand side as our red Protoss, it is Alpha Rex's Estrella. I'm glad you actually brought that up also, uh, Ben, is Astraea did come up really quickly. And I think one of the most impressive things to me about Astraea is that not just that he got so good so quickly, it's that I think the way, his play style and the thing that made him very unique as a player was that he does these kind of like slightly off meta builds. He'll do these like strange takes and it's literally his own concoctions. It's his own creations. And I actually feel like Typically in StarCraft, when you've had a player that's very build order oriented or has like their own creative concoctions, those are the players that have a moment in the spotlight and then they fall off. Astrea has had staying power though as one of those players and that is truly impressive to me. This is really weird by the way, like Neeb pretty much crossed the entire map and then he's like, you know what, with my probe, I'm just going to go back to the north side of the map. And Estrella, he's kept his probe hidden, has also not really scouted. He's kind of scouted around a little bit, but <laughs> OK, this is bonkers. Now, yeah. <laughs> this, this is exactly what I was expecting from a series between these two players. Uh, well, Neve is going to have his uh, hidden pylon kind of, like you said, still on his own side of the map. He's not sending his probe back over there, so he's not planning to proxy anything, but yeah. Astrea is going for the the ultimate in-your-face proxy, and I think that this is also probably a great identification by Astrea, just that he knows that Neve is the kind of guy who will send his probe all around the corners of the map looking for things, and he's not just going to go for a beeline back across the map and then move his probe back home. I, I'm thinking he thought he might be up against a one-gate fast expand, you know, because up until that point, all the info that he had he was blind as a bat. Like he made that call to go for the pylon like he did and the gateway uh, before he scouted anything. Um, and when he when he kind of saw the base, I saw his head kind of twitch a little bit. Like this is definitely mm. an unusual situation. Oh my goodness, are they going round? But the, the probe's gonna see it on the way back. <laughs> yeah, he, he will end up scouting it. And let me tell you something, Ben, that pylon's looking a, a little bit vulnerable if he didn't know that there was probably going to be two more stock was joining the fray. So I'm glad that Neve does not stick around and just end up potentially losing a bunch of his stalkers over here going after that pylon. Uh, this is uh, going to get hyper aggressive hyper quickly, but Neve is doing something pretty interesting. He's already thrown down both of his shield batteries at the natural before even starting up his Nexus. Yeah, he certainly has. And Estrella? He's kind of stepping it back a bit, isn't he? He's going for a Nexus. Yeah, he's building up quite a stalk account over here, but getting a Nexus, getting a Sentry, so that can kind of make sure that he can get scouting information afterwards. But look at Neeb, he's just running in with a probe, and he's like, oh, you're taking a Nexus with this, huh? Yeah, I'm in pretty okay shape. Yeah, we're going to see Astraea start to poke on forward. He's going to look for opportunities to pick off some of these stalkers, but after seeing both those shield batteries there, Looks like he's going to back off for at least a little bit and rely on, well, the fact that he has an extra warp gate and he should have oh. a larger number of warpings for a bit. Look, look at Neeb. He's being so cheeky with this probe. <laughs> like, if he goes back there on the high ground, he can see everything that's going on. And, <laughs> I mean, you didn't get to see much, but, oh, what a weird, weird start to this game. It's so weird. I, I'm having the sickest uh -oh. sense of deja vu. Like, I've seen this exact game before, but... Uh, I mean, this is definitely where it's going to get into a, a very interesting spot as we do have a Twilight Council coming on up. And as Estrella just kind of has all of his units in the center of the map with literally some of his production in the center, he's going to be able to use the sentries to get some scouting information and everything. But is he actually just going to wait for Blink? No, he is going to retreat back home. Okay, I was like, there's no way, Estrella, you can actually just sit in the center of the map until literally you finish up Blink and then go, right? Okay, so Estrella saw this oracle with his hallucinated phoenix, and Neeb knew he got spotted, so he's like, you know what, I'm going to put a stasis here. And then because he caught the army, he knows that he can't fight to keep this gateway alive and this pylon. This is just some nice decision-making by both of them, but I'm really liking how Neeb's just 
taking what he can to just get every little bit of an edge. Oh, Oracle's going to come in over here and uh, Stalkers will be able to force them back. I love the revelation over there. It's going to catch wind of everything that really needs to be scattered over here, including the fact that there's that Twilight Council already finished up and clearly researching something. Uh, it's usually going to be a pretty safe bet to assume that that's going to be Blink at this stage in the game. Yeah, definitely. And they're both starting up their forges as well. Uh, forge is usually uh, a good building to make when you know you're not going to die anymore, when you feel that you're relatively safe. Oh, where are these probes falling? I guess between the bases, right? Yeah. Oracle finding just an opportunity to catch some of those transferring workers. But, uh, well, Blink is about to finish up here for Astraea, so I think that Oracle is going to have to be extremely cautious if it wants to stick around. Definitely done its job, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Granted the uh, gateway kill, the pylon kill, and got a few probes and scouting information. It's just a really good start for uh, the Ting Protoss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now with the third base coming on up in the more forward position over here for Neeb. It's funny because Ooh. this... A oh, little bit of a miss micro there from Astrea. Misses the blank with his bottom two stalkers. Funny enough, yeah, he's going to be able to at least escape out of there alive and... Well, could have maybe gotten like two more probe kills there if he had uh, done the proper blink up. But at the end of the day, gets a few worker kills, and doesn't lose anything in the process. Actually, Ravi, I think he could have got way more. Like one shot in probes is so different. And just mm. that two stalker warping wouldn't have cut it either. Um, I, I, that was obviously a massive blunder for Australia. And that's a big timing window gone. And he saw the third going up for Neeb. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's all a little bit rough. Hmm. Well, uh, I mean, we are going to get to move into the next stage of the game before it looks like a Neeb actually is. Uh, is he actually going to commit over here? He's just got the stalkers and the sentries, so he might be able to make something happen over here. But Astraea has his first immortal already out and still has a fairly equal number of stalkers. So I think, yeah, Neeb is going to have a hard time busting him through far. Oh my god, Astraea with the hyper aggro blink forward is going to be able to snipe off a handful of these stalkers, takes off the sentries, but. Uh, Astraea, he loses out on a few more stalkers, but has that immortal still alive? That immortal is going to be extremely vulnerable to versus this number of stalkers from Neeb, though. I feel that Astraea is playing really reckless this game. Like a lot of it is just, mm -hmm. was was that a good fight for him? Absolutely not. Uh, behind it all, Neeb is getting his plus two along with charge. Astraea actually chose to neglect charge for now, but he's getting immortals and what have you. But he is in position if Neeb does blink and oh my goodness, he went for it. Yeah, he tries to focus far down the Oracle to prevent any additional blinks up or down later on. We end up seeing Observer almost gets focus fired down by Neeb. Doesn't quite manage to get it, but uh, I mean, overall, solid defense there from Astraea. Doesn't let that uh, very annoying blink up spot cause him too much trouble. No, he doesn't. And a warp prism on the way now for Neeb. That's also an indicator of you want to pile on aggression, and he's taken a fourth base behind it. His charge is about done versus the charge that's only just started for Astraea. Well, Astraea's getting up his own Warp Prism now, so <laughs> funny enough, even though uh, Neeb's Warp Prism was actually finished up already, he's not moving across the map or anything just yet. He's just using the Warp Prism for harass. Astraea's the one that is moving across the map without a Warp Prism, though, with his entire army, and uh, this, this gets a little bit scary right now, Ben, because the Immortals in the Sentry have a lot more trouble retreating from these situations then, you know, a big blink stalker army. I think Astraea's really lucky that Neeb didn't chase him down there because, mm. yeah, his army's way more mobile right now. And Neeb, he's just got more of everything, it feels like. Yeah, especially with the uh, charge coming on, or already finished up there for Neeb. I, I think the charge loss is just gonna be way too much for Astraea to deal with right now. In fact, I think that uh, Neeb is still hitting the perfect timing to take advantage of them. He's got a large amount more army supply. He's got the charge upgrade. He's got plus two very close to finishing up as well. I mean, this is just actually Neeb's time to go. Yeah, and I think he realizes it too. He's probably going to wait for that plus two because it's so close. But in fact, he's hitting it seconds before uh, Astraea is going to hit it. And this Nexus, it isn't complete yet. He can't even pop shield battery overcharge. No, as Stalkers are trying to blink back to allow the Zell to the front lines. War Prism gets sniped off, though, so the Immortals can no longer micro back into the War Prism. The Zealots are honestly just the saviors of the day over here, I think, for Neve. They are just going to be able to tear through a majority of this army. There's that single Archon there for Astraea. 
But as the Nexus goes down, that already was enough damage. If they just trade out evenly from here, Neve is still going to be hyper confident to take this game. Yeah, it's just too much Neve right now. Big warpins from Astraea, but look how confident Neve is just blinking on. All the valuable units are falling for Astraea. Nice zealots from the left side, but uh, there's just not enough. Uh, Neve's going to take this quite decisively. Yeah, the Archon shred through those Zealots and uh, Astraea is going to be thinking about his game plan for game number two right now because, yeah, well, oh, let's, let's just say that even this Oracle is going to find a little bit of extra value here. Ah, super good play by Neve. Like, he didn't make any mistakes, honestly. Didn't make any mistake whatsoever. GG. Handles a uh, pretty aggressive opening there from Astraea with a proxy gate. But I think like you were saying, Ben, that may have been Astraea hoping for something a little bit different in terms of the opening that he was going to face off against versus Neve, hoping that maybe that Nexus was already down and he could take advantage of that. Uh, I know that Neve is absolutely one of those Protoss players that has been loving those one gate expands, but definitely not being the case that game. Yeah, I mean, Astraea's he's no slouch. Uh, when it comes to hearing the word on the street and stuff. And the only thing I've been hearing about from Neeb, and he has played Protosses before, um, it, it's just been this one gate fast expand stuff that's kind of the new meta. And uh, heard the interviews from Petit Drogo with his practice. Max Pax was also like, yeah, I know Drogo was practicing with Neeb and Neeb also plays one gate fast expand like me. Um, and I really think Australia that game really banked on it you know like he absolutely did but it turned real wacky given that they both didn't scout each other they both did their own thing but neeb after the start of the game he was very careful and just really immaculate scouting and decision making yeah handled a an odd situation that probably doesn't pop up that often uh pretty well but like you were saying i think Astrea is a really good build order sniper. He's a very creative player in that regard. And I think he's really good at a lot of his build orders are not necessarily standard for a good reason because they have big risks associated with them or they're very actively made or tailored for a particular style that he thinks his opponent is going to go for. And oftentimes they're very, very much tailored around someone who's playing standard. Uh, Neeb kind of breaking away from what I think he's well known for, like you were saying means that Estrella is going for a build that doesn't work quite as well. And you know what, Ben? I would not I would not even be that surprised if we go into game number two now and he does go for the one gate expand and say, aha, uh, you would, I thought you would try and predict me for game number one. So I'm just going to throw out a little curveball here and now you're not going to be sure for game number two or three. It is a much better map for it given the ramp at the natural. Spawning over in the bottom right-hand side of Blackburn, it is Estrella. And here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player from Ting. He is Neeb. Hmm, so this is kind of leading towards a game where they're both going to go for the low ground expansion. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with it, necessarily. I've heard a lot of talk about this particular build, and there seems to be so many variations and follow-ups that you can get going with it. People tend to love the Stargate follow-ups, but first of all, we're going to have our own little mini game, I suppose, of who can get the Nexus up quicker and who can block it better. Yeah, I feel like this game oftentimes ends exactly the same way on both sides, where both players say, well, yes, I, I, I will block your Nexus, and yes, I will build a Cybercore and get out the, force out the Zealot, and then it all ends up being about the same in the end. But it's always it's always an entertaining game to watch. I love that this has become a literal standard of PvP at this point. Yeah, and it's one you have to partake in if you mm -hmm. go for this. Like, uh, I've heard Protosses say, like, oh, I don't like the um, I don't like the one gate expand stuff. And I think it always comes down to not enjoying this part of the game instead of like not enjoying where it leads to afterwards. Because yeah, you have to respect this part of the game and coming and doing it properly some protosses managed to get such an edge over other protosses down to the or due to the little nuances that they can get away with mm -hmm. well we already see that the the zealot is out over there for uh neeb and hasn't quite got saved up those minerals to actually throw up the expansion Went oh you know astrea skipped the zealot he canceled the zealot and that's why he was he, able to get it up so fast he did yeah and also, I guess the probe wasn't there in position, right? So he could get away mm. with it. So 
I, we saw a similar situation like this, though, between Max Pax and Drogo, where on Oxide, Drogo went for the earlier Nexus. Max Pax was like, he had the ability to make the Nexus, but he chose the Stargate first. That kind of stuff mm. can really, like, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Neve does with it. Yeah, what is he going to be sending across the map? I mean, Oracle definitely is the unit that makes the most sense, usually in these kind of situations. And we see a Twilight Council coming out over here for Astrea. Now, Astrea went for hyper fast sentry, right? He killed off the scouting worker with a sentry. So this is going to give him really, really good scouting intel. And we already see first Lucy Phoenix coming on out. I mean, it is literally a Protoss player that has only made sentries this game. He's, of course, going to have hyper fast scouting. He is, and he gets to see the Oracle. So he's mm -hmm. gonna have three units that shoot up, but only one Stalker. And Neve does come along and he's like, aha, uh -huh, a full wall off here as well. That, mm. I mean, it, it is an unusual game, Ravi. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see where this one leads us. Ooh, uh, honestly, I wanna actually say it's like, it's a 50-50 there. Uh, Neve, I think made the bad guess on it. Because either, oh, I love the hallucinating Stalkers. That's, that's cute but I don't think it's going to come into effect. Uh, if Neve goes to the main base, I actually think the shield battery was a few seconds away from finishing, and Neve probably could have killed a couple of workers there, but he went to the natural expansion where the units were instead and had a little bit more trouble actually finding anything. So uh, Neve kind of loses the 50-50 on that, but good on Astrea. Hmm. Oh, ho, ho. Neve going for a dark shrine. Where's he making it? Right in his main. Oh, definitely interesting. Uh, seems like it's going to be hard to keep that under wraps, given, you know, sentries, hallucinating Phoenix scouting and everything. But yeah, maybe he's going to be OK with it, I guess. Yeah, definitely interesting. He's also getting blink at the same time. I, I mean, that's a lot of gas being used in quite a lot of tech. Mm -hmm. And he knows that his opponent has that gateway wall off. So like Australia leaving his base and taking a third. Aha, he went for the pylon trick there to get outside of the gateway. Mm. So we'll be able to start his third Nexus up now. Yeah, it's important to note that even as Australia comes in to scout this dark shrine, he has not started a robo or anything just yet. I, he can kind of start up like photon cans or something, but it is also potentially just going to be nice to have those DTs out because you now have to wait for the robo and the observer to finish before you really actually have any sense of map control. Uh, the third base even could potentially come under a little bit of fire if there were really quick DTs warped in from a proxy pylon or something. Don't actually have any proxy pylons or even like a warp prism or anything out from Neeb though, so not really going to come into effect as much. Yeah, definitely. And what do you think about uh, Neeb's follow-up from this point on? Uh, just like adding on the third base, getting up additional gateways and getting up blink? Oh, just like what do you think he's going to do like how is he going to be under around the map after seeing how astray is playing uh yeah i mean i think it's like really you can just kind of use your blink stalkers try and be a little bit aggressive but you have to be a little bit cautious about not running into like an overwhelming number but i think from there then you usually are going to warp in maybe a couple of dts get up an archon or two if you start seeing those zealots getting warped in from your opponent uh this is a bold move over here from neve to try and go for this blink stalker play to the main base but since there's not really a whole lot of vision over there, it seemed like it maybe could have paid off. Neve just decides to blink back though. Estrella is very, very close behind him on that. Yeah, that was close actually. Like that could have really bit Neve in the bum, uh, revealed himself a little bit and then oh, could have been bad on the retreat. But this game's far more similar in what they're both going for. Ah, is Estrella gonna try his own look with trying it in Neve's base here? Neve is a little bit uh, more, I think, prepared with a pylon over there. It's, it's in a more obvious place too, so Australia will realize there's a pylon over there. I actually wonder if he's just gonna go after the pylon for free damage. No, he's actually, he's gonna tax the pylon once and then moves on in. There is a massive Artosis pylon over here. It's powering two warp gates and two still building warp gates and the Dark Shrine and also the Forge, but uh, not enough time to actually take advantage of it over there for Australia. Oh, I was thinking. If only at his own observer, right? That observer moved so slow in that slow zone. Estrella, though, being cheeky, taking his fourth as the gold here. Yeah, a very fast fourth base as well. Um, you keep an eye out on that observer count as well, because we still got that one observer out, like you were saying, but now's the time that you're usually going to want to make a bunch of immortals. We still have a dark shrine that hasn't come into play at all this game, so 
always an option for Neeb, especially as the bases start getting spread out, to warp in even just one or two DTs or even more and go for some of those big run buys, especially at a place like that gold base. Yeah, it's definitely weird that the DT or the Dark Shrine hasn't been utilized yet at all. Um, Neeb was super supply blocked, by the way. And then he had to make like eight pylons at once. So that's why we see the 117 out of 164. Uh, he's also probing up quite decently with all this. And he is going to start mounting on pressure on Astraea's gold base over here. Uh, gold base finishes on up. I actually wonder, does, does Neeb actually just blink over the gold minerals and start attacking that Nexus? Save up for the blink to blink back over if uh, Astraea comes to defend? Or does he, does he go around the long way? How does he actually assault this base? You know what? I, I think he's actually just waiting for the probes to get on over there. And I think he's looking mm. for the denial of mining going on. And Astraea, he comes over, he scouts with this uh, Zealot. Ooh. Does oh. spot the army of Neve though. Yeah, <laughs> snipes off that uh, little scouter. We end up seeing that there is a lot of these Zells coming on forward. Oh, man. If Neve had lost that Warp Prism, that would have been really brutal. The Stasis is catching a bunch of these Zells and even an Archon over here. Neve is going to try and seize the opportunity. Tries to go for some full seals to lock out his opponent. Doesn't quite get anything, but now we end up seeing Neve just charging on forward. There's the Photon Overcharge, or sorry, the uh, Shield Battery Overcharge finally coming on into effect, but Neve is already cleaning up so many units over here for Astraea. These stasis wards have been crucial in this game. I didn't even see it happen, but the fact that it did, wow, Astraea just had like 12 supply extra less in this fight, which was huge for Neeb. And now I think Neeb could just sit on the other side of this gold base, and that's exactly yeah. what he's going to do. Oh, nice move by Astraea, though. Yeah, Blinks on forward is going to be able to snipe off at least a few of these units, and it also absorbs the, uh, the natural targeting and everything for uh, these units. Wouldn't mind if uh, Nee was able to, or sorry, Australia was able to get one of these immortals to the front lines, but these forces are just locking him out. Zealot warp in inside the main base is a nice way for Australia to fight back a little bit over here, but man, he is taking a lot more damage than I think he's dishing out so far. Yeah, losing some probes as well, and DTs can be used for defense. That's mm -hmm. why I got the Dark Shrine. Yeah, definitely a nice way to handle some of those Zealot warp ins. Those DTs do damage real, real fast. Another Stasis Trap has to come down. There's a nice pickoff there from Astraea. Gets the Oracle. Uh, denies the Stasis Trap. Stasis Trap, another uh, number two, does get set off over there by a single Zealot. But he was just going to back off after everything that's happened. And he's probably going to feel pretty good about his position in the game now. Yeah, I don't think he needs to really lean on too much. Granted, there's a gold base, but look at the probe count. It's actually very good for Neeb. And despite that gold base, if you have a fully saturated, uh, like, normal base, it mines almost equally uh, with a gold base. So no worry for him. Double Robo Bay does start for him. I dare say that's a little bit of an error, but pretty much the first one from Need this game. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he'll be able to uh, notice that later on, but he might be a little bit preoccupied with this fight that's uh, about to break out over here. I do want to know that, I mean, it's an even number of these Ooh. Archons for both sides. We see a lot of Zealots on either side, and these cells are going to get chewed through by the Archon splash damage. It does seem like Australia has a few more Zealots in the mix over here, though. And, oh, there's more Zealots coming in over here, finally, for Neve. This this choke point over here and this high ground is making such an awkward engagement, I have to say, for Neve, though. I don't think she think it's an observer of the army, so he doesn't really have a lot of high ground vision. You know, the crazy part is, like, Neeb was supply blocked during all of that out of 188. Mm. And he could warp in more units, even though he wanted to. Uh, but <laughs> I, I love this. I love the posturing at this gold base just behind it. Because look at the pro count now. Like, oh. 59 to 80. Oh, what's happened over here? Yeah, I mean, DTs are great for cleaning these units up, but they also have one fatal flaw sometimes, which is... Well, they don't actually divert the attacks of your opponent. So even as the Observer shows up, those DTs get cleaned up. The Observer does end up, uh, I guess, surviving through all of this. So Astraea can at least come back with that. And Astraea also pulls Neeb back for a little bit. It gives himself some breathing space. Yeah, interesting that Neeb went for the recall there as opposed to like warping in more Zealots. I'm guessing he just warped in a bunch of units. Um, mm. But there is one big thing that Astraea's missed out in this game. and. I don't know if he's noticed it or not, but the transition that Neeb was going for behind all this, Disruptors are now available. Disruptors are definitely going to be big. Uh, I mean, Astraea can at least leverage one of the key things over here also, which is all of Neeb's 
Archons have been coming from Dark Templars, which is the more expensive way to do it. And that's also the reason why I think Astraea started having more Zealots toward the end of that fight, just available. Because when you make it from High Templar, you aren't spending as many minerals. And we're starting to already see that there's a lot more Archons over here for Astraea. If he can take advantage of that, I think he still might be able to find some kind of victories here in some of these fights. But it is going to be very tough with those Disruptors coming into the mix. That was four Stalkers just going down for free there for uh, Shreya. He's 20 supply behind here, but that kind of could be measured out in the amount of probes that he has less than Neeb. But Neeb, he's just posturing over here, and he will be able to snipe oh. in a moment before the fight even begins. That is a really big pickoff, and now I almost feel like Astraea is forcing himself in a position where he just has to go for it. But now well, he's half his, army, half his army's attacking the Nexus! I, I mean, he's not even going to get this Nexus by the looks of it. This is a real sloppy engagement, and he has to recall out of here, but the Zealots are now joining. They're just like, okay, we'll save you. Maybe not. I mean, Neve is up 60 supply for a very good reason right now, Ben. It, it seemed like it was not a great position there for Astraea. It was a recoverable position, though. But after that last fight, uh, the, I just don't even know what you can do from there. You're up against Disruptors, which are just... Oftentimes, if they don't take better engagements for you, they at least create opportunities to cre uh, take better engagements. And now, I mean, Astraea is just out macroed at this point. His army supply is literally half of his opponents. Out macroed, out gunned. Neeb forces the overcharge, gets back, and he doesn't need to force anything. He's got this little Rambo squad of Zealots and DTs on the top side of the map, and Astraea takes a fight away from the shield battery, but any fight he's going to take at this point will feel like a bad one. Oh, three Archons! Oh my god! Oh. 450 gas disappears and Astraea taps out. Neeb goes up 2-0 to zero in this best of five. 900 gas, Fear Dragon. Two High Templars, each oh. one with that one. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's all right. I'm math gonna... on stream, Ravi. Math on stream. It's a rough one. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to let that one sink in as we uh, go to our break, guys, before we come back with game number three of this best of five. We'll see you in a bit.
Yet again, Ben, we find ourselves in this position, a 2-0 lead for one of these players in a best of five. Uh, I think that this one is still a series I could see kind of start reversing back and Estrella taking some opportunities, taking some fights. These last two games have definitely not gone his way though, as Neeb, like you said, has some pretty impressive PVP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I do think the first game, uh, Lightshade, Estrella definitely didn't play like there was a few errors right the four blink stalks mm -hmm. into the main and stuff and maybe the the build order choice wasn't like it just didn't work out as he planned but neeb has been absolutely phenomenal so far and spawning over in the top right hand side as a blue protoss playing for ting it is neeb down here in the bottom left hand side of the map the red protoss player he is max astrea angel This is also a map that very much, well, it's been the map for quite some time now when it comes down to the one gate fast expand, which is nice. Um, I also definitely feel that these last two maps, if, if talk of the town is correct, have definitely benefited me when it comes down to map selection. And that isn't because I think Astrea's not good at the one gate fast expand. In fact, the contrary, I think he's really damn good at it. But Neeb, I've just heard so much about him practicing this a lot uh, with some of the best European tosses. Yeah, I mean, Neeb is uh, he's definitely one of those players that's playing a lot on Europe and is well known practicing with a lot of the European players, as we even heard, like you mentioned it before. Uh, some of the European players are saying in their interviews that they were seeing Neeb practice with them and everything. So it's uh, not too big of a surprise to me that Neeb oftentimes plays very much like the European Protoss players. I think Estrella is, I uh, he'll usually be the player that I think occasionally will play on EU, but is mostly actually playing on Korea. And funny enough, I I, I know that there are some Korean players, Protoss players who are doing more of the one gate fast expands. I actually don't know how much it caught on in Korea right now. Yeah, me neither. Like, honestly, it's, it's kind of a new, era almost. A lot of the mm -hmm. EU protests swear by it and Max Pax is highly regarded as one of the best at it. Um, Neve this time is getting the pylon block down while mm -hmm. also getting the Stargate nice and early. Mm, yeah, so I mean you were talking a little bit about this before how just opting to go for that Yoink. Stargate can sometimes be a nice way to go about things. Now Two probes on this pylon alongside the uh, the stalker that kind of gets made over here. Astraea skipped that zealot yet again, so he basically had to wait for the stalker, and I think it's kind of necessary at that point to pull two probes at least to start working away at these buildings. And Astraea actually lost his probe, the scouting probe, to a zealot. So Neeb, even though he made the zealot, it came in handy, it denied the probe itself. He gets his nexus up faster, and he has a Stargate, and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna let this Cybercore finish. And Estrella, did you see that? I think he mispositioned yeah. the building, and then he remade it again. Like, he's showing that he's pretty nervous this game, and he definitely wins out the early game here. I, yeah, undoubtedly. There, there's not really a position that I, I would say that I feel like Estrella things are going really well for right now. I mean, maybe the, that he has like two additional workers, but that is very quickly going to be, uh, you know, Put, put in the, the grand scheme of things in comparison to a much faster Nexus. Nexus is almost done by the time Estrella can plant down a Nexus. And well, he's still saving up the resources for a Nexus. It seems like he still definitely wants to go for one, but uh, Neeb even goes for the oh. Stasis Trap. Oh, I love that A move. Oh my God. Immediately target fires down the Stasis Trap. Estrella just knew it was going to happen. Yeah, Estrella was very quick there. Like before he even knew what was happening, uh, Neeb had his stasis super sniped. Uh, Estrella is going to start up a Nexus. He is getting Blink as well. Like he's already on three gates mm -hmm. with all this. It is going to be quite a lot of pressure from him, but not oh, before. Here. Yeah, not before it gets really bad. These oracles. Oh no. I don't care about the shield battery. Uh, ben, th this is literally the kind of thing that can just put you into an all-in position. This is actually 11 workers worth of damage. Australia's is almost back down to the starting number of workers. 16 versus 30. It's all well and good having a bunch of stalkers on the map. In fact, he will be up to eight here, but the void raid's real close. 
Ooh, uh, this is going to be kind of dicey. I do love Neve's position. Yeah, uh, Astrea is going to have... <laughs> what a cute pylon in the back that he has going up. That's actually so funny. Um, well, Astrea is going to have to make a lot happen over here. He tries to right-click down. The Void Ray doesn't oh. quite kill it because he's still short a few stalkers for that, but... Forces out the prismatic alignment pretty early on. That is at least one little victory here, because, well, he's going to be taking a big a big L on the mineral line. Oh, he certainly is. He's going to be down to zero probes at this rate, like for real. But oh, even an immortal, Neve, you absolute star. There is no chance for Australia here. Neve, holy crap, did he bring it for the series? <laughs> the hardest of Smackdowns, Neve, absolute god, reclaims his. Uh,